And here we go. On the 23rd of November, 2019. This is Flash at the Dork Table. No hostage available, you guys. You lucky people out there. You got me all to yourself on Saturday afternoon in Denmark. <laughs> and uh, say hey to Grimner and thanks a lot for all the hard paperwork and computer work he does to keep us alive on the reallibertymedia.com. And uh, we've got for your bots and bodies tonight, well, today, this afternoon, evening, morning, slash day, we have for your uh, reading perusal in the reallibertymedia.com chat, we've got Barman, Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Chelsea, Doni, Java Doctor 2, J Dread, Ponder Gander, Poopster, Prince, Robworks, Rones, Vanna White, Vinny, Weather Dork, The Phantom, Asmo 2, CC66, Chaskira Circle, Hello, honey. Cyborg, Noodle, E Man, and Siv, Me, Frumpy, Frumpy Work, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Pone Sauce, Sock Puppet, Salt Lake City Mike, Slim Flim Flim, Smart Has, The Holiest Roger, Van Meter, and Zippix. And there's a lineup for, if you get bored and you want to chat, that's what you do. You go over to the reallibertymedia.com and you make up a name. And then you go in and you argue about who owns the color blue. And... <laughs> That's pretty much where we're at. Anyway, today's episode of The Dork Table is going to be entitled... Yeah, I do my paperwork. Is going to be entitled, Never Mind the Results. This test is correct 29% of the time. Wow. Man. And that's the way we live, you know. A third is better than nothing, right? Hey, if two out of three people don't like it, that means one of them... Liked it. I think I'm going to try it. Yeah, here's to 420. It's 420 somewhere. Like Vincenzo would say. If he was here, he'd probably say it at 420. Me, I don't like the clock. Me and the clock are not the best of friends. Go figure. So, what have we got on the old mind today for the uh, reallibertymedia.com chatters? To chat about. And it's this idea that I got about this. uh, The test is correct so much of the time. I mean, hey, anybody out there ever not come across that? Where they went, well, trust me, I know what I'm doing. I'm a paid professional, baby. Just bend over and do as you're told. And like myself, most of us in the past, had to. We didn't know any different. And then when you start to learn shit, you know, I think your circle of friends shrinks. The smarter, maybe smarter is not the right term. The more reality that you accept, I think the smaller your circle of friends gets because you become impossible for uh, average folk to comprehend. You, you can see it in their faces sometimes when you speak to you know, an average Joe that Waves a flag, fights a war, hates the Muslims, that kind of shit. You know, it took a lot of work to get that guy where he is. And we're supposed to respect that, you know, because, well, they're protecting us from the evil that men do. Sadly, my opinion, the people that do all the freaking harm are the ones that are promoted and uh, they're postured in the right position to get attention, like Trump or what's her name, that Greta girl. You know, the the people that are behind that promoting these folks, they don't like you. If they liked you, they wouldn't do what they're doing. And the proof to that is in life itself, I suppose. It seems to me that people that have the the loudest opinions about the things that they want to guide you towards are the most hypocritical and they're full of shit. Not only are they hypocritical, but they they might not even know it. But they're still... They want you to do, but they don't want to do themselves. And 
you know, uh, it's a hard lesson for an average guy for some reason to follow along and seem to get. You know, the rich are doing this, and the politicians are doing that, but you're not rich, nor are you a politician, so guess who's not doing that? <laughs> Get into some trouble with the state. You'll find out what I'm talking about in about five seconds. It doesn't take the average Joe, like myself, more than maybe five or ten seconds of interaction with the state to really get a grip on what side of the fence you're on. Because it's a great story and it sounds really good. Inalienable rights, and we're going to protect you from the terrorists and all. Um, on and on, and all the promises they make. And they sound really good. But where do you apply any of this government shit in daily life? You know? I was sitting with a friend of mine at the bar before I came on to do the show tonight. And we were just sitting there bantering about uh, what was going on around us. And the difference in the way that me and this fellow see the world, and how similar it is. And we're like... We're off in a corner of the room where all the cool kids don't sit. It's like the dork table in the bar. You know, if you don't want to be popular, go sit over there. And if you want to be popular, you sit in this particular area. And it's <laughs> what I've seemed to have done is um, I've introduced the, this new corner to the game. And when I show up, there's already people sitting there where normally it's empty. And now when I go in, there's there's activity in, in my little area, so it's growing. That could be a coincidence. Or, I could let my ego run astray and think that something that, uh, something's going on because I think we see things. Like Mary sees things one way, Benny will see something one way, and then here I come along. And I don't agree with either of them about the three of us looking at the exact same thing at the exact same time. Yet, we don't agree on what we're looking at. So, what we've been taught in life is when that happens to you, the other fella's a dumbass and he don't understand. Poor fucker. Because, <laughs> you know, in, um, in the decision-making world, you got to, what's the right way? you got to be right. You know, that's the goal, to be right. And I don't, I'm not so sure anymore what right is. You know, we debate it all the time on the chat rooms, and I see a lot of links, and people have a lot of opinions about a lot of things. And some of the stuff I agree with, and some of the stuff I don't agree with, but it doesn't change the person that's delivering their message. If they don't hear me, then their mind is obviously made up, and even if they did hear me, if your mind's made up about something, Whatever it took to get you there is hard to uh, rearrange, to get you to look at something in a new fashion. And I guess that would work on me too, but in my opinion, I've seen the state from both sides of it, being a using it, you know, being a part of it, and then stepping the fuck out of it and saying, no, nah, enough, enough, is enough, is enough of this shit. I don't want any more of it. But Making that decision was uh, it was hard to recognize because I was so uh, surrounded by state employees and state. And it was so normal that uh, I wasn't really aware of the trappings. I felt separated from it. And I think it's where your mind takes you. I don't, I don't really think other people tell you what you believe. Uh, maybe they do for a while. And if you're lucky, you grow up. And if you grow up, hey, mental pancakes. I just saw dork cakes on the RLM saying hey to me. Ah, what's up? Uh, Circle says love you, pancakes. Anyway, I think the good part about all this is that we have the ability to look at something and make up for our ourselves how we see these things and when you start interacting with other people sometimes that interaction can change the way you talk like me and Vinny will get into a disagreement about something 
and I'll scramble for a freaking word that I never use. And then I get mad because I use it. But I'm human just like the next guy. And, man, I hate admitting that. I want to be superhuman and smarter than you. and uh, But I'm not. The reality is very disappointing. When, uh, when I take a good, serious look at my surroundings at just about any given time, at the time I'm doing it, it's very difficult to remember that I'm the one that's interpreting all this shit that's going on around me. So I'm seeing what I want to see. Whether I like it or whether I don't like it, it has fuck all to do with what you see. That's It's still my decision. I mean, I can take the worst insult somebody can give me and I can choose to laugh it off and ha ha ha, that's funny. Or I could be all butthurt. And, eh, you can't talk to me like that. Uh, 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 uh. Well, what is it about the person giving you the, in- the input that brings the desired response out of you. you know? Some people can say anything they want to me and it just rolls off. And other folks, I take them more seriously than other folks. And I don't know how to identify why. I just know it happens. And it's always hindsight. Sometimes weeks go by before I really realize that a conversation took place and that anything happened. And then I'll be sitting there doing something else and then a light bulb will bump, ding, and I'll have a memory of, hey, I heard this. And as the road, you know, unfolds before me, so to speak, the things that I learn on Tuesday that I don't need, I'll need them on Saturday, you know, or Sunday. So, hmm, figuring out what to pick up and what to avoid, I think for me has been the answer to the problems that I see. You know, if I see something's a problem, which I hardly ever do. And I mean that kind of in a good way, because I look at a problem as something that has a solution. Uh, So, uh, how would you define that in a simple way? You know, like a splinter in your finger is a problem. Uh, An argument with a person, it's not really a problem. It is if you want it to be. You can make it that way. Um. I think I choose to fight more than not to fight. Don't know why, but the outside in, you know, interactions with me are always, there's always a friction to it. Very seldom am I comfortable uh, in the company of other carbon-based life forms that can communicate or crowds, big crowds irritate me. Small crowds, eh, I can hang with a small crowd. 50 people, that's not too much. 150 people, and I start to worry. You know, I, things go wrong, and people do and say things they don't mean. And the bigger the crowd, it seems to me that more opportunity there is for something to fuck up and screw up your night or day. And the smaller things are just easier to enter or exit. It's not you're not confined in a big mob. You know, 50 people you got to get past to escape it. So, well, then that's the way I see it. A lot of folks don't. Some people thrive on that. Big crowds and lots of people around them, they feel secure. And me, I feel very uh, trapped. Trapped and confined and overcrowded like a lab rat. They're not giving us enough water, and I'm angry, so I'm going to act out. And that's what, it, that's what uh, I recognize that in people when they're doing it, I think. Some folks are... Uh, they're subtle about their social behaviors. and they, they do things physically that contradict the behavior they're exhibiting where they're at. You know, like their body language. There's some books on this shit. It's really fascinating stuff. And it's all a matter of interpretation because nothing is 100%. But there's a lot of things about people that without understanding what they say, just watching them move and how they sit, and how they move their cigarette, wear their glasses, all this kind of shit, that it makes you wonder why they're even sitting where they're at. Well, me, not you. I like to talk in the you tense. Anyway. 
there's no you know, like school. If you go to school to learn crap like you know who died in 1741. I didn't care about 1741 when I was eight. I don't care about 1741 now. If, if I could get rid of anything, it would be this freaking, uh, this history shit we're all stuck on. This guy did this and this year, and he invented that. And you grow up, and 50 years later, you found out that the guy they told you about, that was not true. What is was a story like uh, Marconi or uh, what happened to Tesla. And now they got this. I, I really get my my self upset. I think thinking about they they bastardized Tesla's memory by naming a failed fucking battery car company billionaire crap game over it. And you know, so history already shunned him. So most people don't even know who you're talking about. But now, when the, the modern day mind hears Tesla. They're going to think of this idiot with this little fucking car and all this other shit. Or um, this rock band or something. But never, rarely, rarely is anyone going to ever think of the guy that brought us where we are now. And this is the shitty side of what Tesla wanted us to have. He wasn't, according to the writings, I didn't meet the man, but according to the evidence that I've been um, seeing, that I've been... Uh, able to get my hands on and take a look at over a lifetime and the people I've encountered they're like Larry Woods and Rob Works and, and Don Carroll you know, people that had hands on experience at different levels of this electronic and electricity and, and all the shit that goes into all that kind of opened up my eyes to uh, new ideas that 10 years ago I probably would have been too busy to hear it because I'm doing shit you know and then I slowed down a little bit, had this internet thing come on. Hey, what's this all about? And over the years, I have seen an incredible amount of bullshit on the internet. But on the other hand, the internet has opened doors to other things that weren't bullshit. And I think that the the good, and it's the duality thing, the good outweighs the bad. And there is a good and bad in information. Um, hmm. I can't find a way to be neutral about that topic. I'd like to. Because I, I don't like to pick a side and get, get into the fight. Then it's always, you know, somebody's got to be right. And somebody's got to be wrong. And hmm, I think taking the ego out of it. You know, if it's not you being right, it's just something that is either correct or incorrect. And the person wasn't attached to it. I wonder if we would argue about the results like we do. You know, because the test results are correct like 29% of the time. So we're going to go by the test. And if you don't believe it, look who's sitting in the White House. And that wasn't from the popular vote. These idiots are still talking the stupid shit about, oh, we'll just reelect him. And it, to me, I'm looking on this game, this political arena thing, right? And they're doing this performance. And, and whoever is coming up, whether it's Trump again or whether it's somebody else, it's already been planned. And the illusion that the, the people have a say in, in the government, what it does or who represents it is. To me, it's a joke. A lot of people hold a lot, you know, they hold their life. It, it, they value this entity they call government. <laughs> It's a great tool, I suppose, but it, to me, it's like a fantasy. I mean, if you don't if you don't see it with your own eyes, then what exactly you know is government? Because we always talk, we debate this shit all the time, you know. Then people will spew shit like, "Well, it's the welfare state, or it's the uh, this, or they give it some identity, an alphabet soup agency," and still. To me, all these things are just words. They're just stories that you're telling me. And unless I'm physically involved in what you're talking about, th then it's not real. But a lot of us, I think with the help of television, television can take your mind to places you can't seem to go on drugs. But uh, <laughs> Moose Girl is on the selection. She knows what I'm talking about. Well, you don't have to agree to understand 
that whatever this government and society thing is, most of it's just a lot of nonsense stories you get told. I mean, if this, like the Epstein thing, if this guy was a, indeed a billionaire, right, and, and he did indeed do the things he's been accused of doing, and he did indeed either disappear or die in a, you know, a prison, there's something wrong, right? I'm just shouldn't have to go any further with any of that. Right there should stop anybody in their tracks and they go, wow, something is definitely amiss here. And the best the internet can provide me so far to date is that the guards that were on duty while he killed himself are being uh, charged with something. And I think, wow. So, they, you know, what, what the system seems to be to me is they've paid these guys off to take a fall because billionaires do not commit suicide in prison. That's insane. It's as bad as 9-11 or Kennedy. And the bigger and more ridiculous the story seems, the more people believe it. You go, wow. And I sit, you know, I sit amongst the Mooses and the Grimners and, and the Vinnies and wonder, you know, how did we get here? And some people have answers. I, me, I, I don't know if i got an answer. I think there's a lot of reasons that I guess guided it, you know, pushed it along. But the illusion that it was our thinking and our our doing, uh, no, 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 that doesn't make any sense to me. Of course, it makes a lot of sense to other people because there's roads and traffic lights to prove their government is there. And all it proves to me is that somebody got paid to put some roads down and traffic lights. But uh, I can't seem to grip that collective reality in the same light that a normal average guy that gets along in the world, you know, regularly. I'm not one of those people. I'm a standout off the wall down at the bar earlier today. And there's a couple of women, and me and Kim were talking. There's a couple of women halfway down the bar, and they're, they're drinking it up and having a good time. And as they drink, they're getting louder, and they're being more of a spectacle. And it was just amusing to me and Kim because we've been those two females getting drunk, being a spectacle. So it, I think the understanding we had, it was their turn in the barrel. You know, we're sitting there minding our business, relaxing, and they're the center of all the drama. <laughs> Instead of the long-haired guy and the fucker with the wolf tattoo on his arm, you know. Um, I don't know if that translated or not, but I, I like bars. Not everybody does. Some people go to bars out of, uh, what would you call it, um, society being, hey, you got to come, you know, the pressure, like I pressured Cirk into going with me to my birthday, because she doesn't usually go. But me, I, for some reason, I get a giggle out of uh, the alcohol in the public and people just getting juiced and acting up. And they let the real them come out for a bit. And some of it's not pretty. You know, Some people are better off without it. And some people are just funny as hell. They, they get a little drunk. And the, the, the in, their inside comes out. They're, they're playful and laughing and having a good time. And I've seemed to draw more of that than anything. That and deep conversations. My friend was still talking about that. Uh, my birthday night. He says, yeah, that was an unusual night. We were reminiscing about it. And I said to him that that situation is normal for me. That's how life truly is uh, as a rule. It doesn't seem to matter where I go. It matters the mood that I'm in when I go there. Because uh, I believe that you draw these things to you. And if you're aware of that you're capable of doing it on top of that, that just makes it that much easier to get a good result out of your awareness of what you're doing. But it's hard. It's like the you know being aware of, uh, I decide how I see whatever I'm looking at. And it's... It, it's hard to separate that from that emotional response crap I got where, oh, that pissed me off. Or, oh, I don't like the color. There's some, you know, something superficial. But someday, maybe when I grow up, I'll be able to uh, 
be more uh, objective and less. I think I'm very. Uh, what is that? I'm very subjective. I go with the way I feel about life, and I don't see very well. I wear eyeglasses to correct my vision. But I've always thought of it as like a way for me to be able to see the world in a way that other people don't see it. It's my own personal, unique way. And when other folks pick up my eyeglasses to see what you know, hey, what kind of vision you got, nine out of ten of them, as soon as they bring them up to their vision, pull them away and start blinking because they're they're that strong. And maybe one out of ten can actually look out of them. And they're amused by it, but uh, their vision isn't as bad as mine. It's very I got like two twenty twenty. It's horrible, but it's good enough that. Uh, if I'm in my faraway glasses, I can see. But if I'm in my reading glasses, <laughs> it's a, oh man, it's, it's how I interpret things too. It's like uh, with the glasses, there's no choice about it. But the way that I mentally see the world around me, that's what I'm trying to get at. Not what I visually see, because that's an individual thing. But how <clears throat> how you interpret the world around you. I, I think wherever you're sitting physically, the people around you generally agree with what you already agree with. So you're usually amongst you know, your peers, um, water seeking its own level and such. Uh, well, we got Vinny and Mental and Grimner and Prince and Frumpy and Moose Girl a Chitter Chattering on our alien feed today for your reading enjoyment. While I ramble on about it's uh, fucking lutely nothing on in a dork table today. But, you know, never mind the results. You know, because results, what do results matter when you think about it? Where does that apply? Hmm. Medical. <laughs> Medicine. And uh, how little uh, I was taught, I think, growing up and so on, when I was being molded into being a believer of whatever they grew me up to believe. What I didn't remember hearing a lot of input about was what I ate made me, you know, when you are what you eat. I heard the, that slogan a few times when I was young. Then it died out. And as I became a teenager, things like that weren't important anymore. And now here I am at 60, and I'm starting to rethink all the little details about you know, my first, say, 20 years, give or take, that I can remember from. Because a lot of shit happened, I've forgotten. But there was a lot of stuff I didn't take seriously when I was a kid that I take seriously now because, uh, you know, history. What do we have going on? Use your powers for God. Um, yeah, mental. It's. It's all a matter of how you interpret that particular concept because the the visual world is different from the electronic world that we can't see. It's there. We know it's there. We got TV sets to prove. You push a button and boom, you get this screen and it's got text on it and you can type and you're talking to somebody in Florida. Boom. Okay. But being happy is impossible. <laughs> I'll never be happy. <laughs> if, if you've ever heard somebody say that, then it might that might have been a good analogy. But I mean, think about it. we've got movies about every subject, the topic, and what people don't always seem to follow along about a film is it doesn't have to be historically correct to be a movie. But a part of us, it seems like even me. I mean, I I recognize this sometimes is that when I visually see it with my eyes, and then I hear the text, you know, verbally, out loud, audible, my ears, it changes the reality that I look at the topic in. And it's over the years, it's softened me on some things, and then it's hardened me on others, like uh, murders, movies. Some movies are so realistic that you got it. <laughs> wow. And... My wife kind of cringes, and me, it takes quite a bit to really get me, because I've seen so much of it, so on. Uh, trying to hold on to uh, 
reality, whatever the hell reality is. It's different for me than it is for you. And that's the part that doesn't translate very well. Or I, I don't speak of it enough when I talk. So the thought doesn't ever get completed. But I don't think that we see the same freaking world, all of us. I don't see how it's possible. I've lived in different places. And my outlook from one place to another is different from place to place for some reason. Oh, I don't know if it's a change of weather patterns or if it's the, well, now it's Danish, so it could be the language, but I don't know. Maybe I just think things are different and they're truly, they're the same. But see, I'm looking at them, you know, and I'm taking all this input in. And on some, some level of reality, I understand what's going on even without understanding the language. Um, but I think a lot of the times when I do understand the language, it makes it easier for people to bullshit me. <laughs> you know, if I was in America drinking, here I am smoking the daytime, and I go out and have a couple of drinks, and I'm getting looser instead of more in control and getting out of control, then it's easier to manipulate you with words. Now, when you don't understand language, it's not so easy. Then what? that's when interpreters come in. So then it's a matter of how much do I trust my friends? <laughs> and even that, if you think about it completely, me and Grim went through this about trusting you know, with fun, funds, money, and shit like that. Uh, it's all the same. You trust people with money, or you trust them with an idea, or you trust them with a promise or a secret. The results can all be the same, depending on what the person does with the knowledge that they're you know, trusted with. Anyway... I had a little meltdown go on there for a bit. For those of you that don't know, it don't matter. And for those of you that do know, I made it back. So, we're going to try to finish a, at least a half a dark table solo. Today on uh, the RealLibertyMedia.com. Anyway, today's show is called Never Mind the Results. This test is correct 29% of the time. And I don't know, I rambled about 15 other things too, but, you know, if the test results say so, then I guess you're a slave to what they say. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, yeah we go back to my medical thing with that one. Every time, that's where I immediately go. And uh, it's not advice. Uh, I don't know what to tell other people, but I think... Uh, you should really spend a lot more in more time investigating what you're doing with this medicine stuff. If you're not getting a result that you want, because that's where I was. I wasn't getting a result that I was promised for this problem that I didn't know I had. So all of a sudden, I've got this doctor telling me I got this illness and I need these pills to keep me okay. And I was wait a minute, where did it come from? So, but of course it wasn't like I had a heart trouble or I was hit by a bus. It was uh, high blood pressure. And I, I, my opinion of all that is that that's a, a word game and a manipulation they can play on anybody. They just figure out what personality you are and they go either high or low. And one or the other, they still want to pump you full of drugs that seem to destroy some part of your body that you can't function without. So, I don't understand that. You know, you're not going to hit your, your uh, windshield with a sledgehammer because your car ain't running. And you think, if I hit it with a sledgehammer in the windshield, that'll make it run better. But that's the mentality that I see with this. Well, these pills that we got you taken could damage your blah, blah, blah. Wait a minute. Why? Okay. <laughs> so, you know, there you go. And different folks have different stories to tell about this. Me and Mary agree because her uh, her mother's on 
uh, medical where they play the blood pressure game with her. And it takes a certain kind of mind, I would think, at this point, to look at that particular game and, and see it as a game instead of a medical practice where they're helping you. And, oh, if you take this pill, you'll be so much. No, the truth of the whole thing is quite the, quite the opposite of what you're told. And the proof of that is when you read the instructions on the pills or whatever, the insert it tells you that this pill may damage your this or that, then why are you taking the fucking thing in the first place? Immediately where my mind went when I read that information for the first time. Because I had no idea that the system that I live under would threaten me like that. I mean, wait a minute, we're going to make you feel better but you might damage your kidney doing it. What? <laughs> so, of course, I get called the dumbass because I don't get it. You know, I don't get how abusing me is going to ever freaking help me. It might help you. I might feel like a better person for it, but uh, I don't know. Most people just live for smartphones and cigarettes. You know, that's that's where we're at. Twenty first fucking century. And uh, what do they got us? They got us smoking. They got us burning oil. They got us drinking alcohol. What other horrible shit do we do? But it's got you know it's legal. We got permission. They put fluoride in the freaking water. <laughs> Fluoride's good for you. <laughs> Till you find out what kind of fluoride they put in the water and where they get it from. Then you might want to rethink fluoride is good for your teeth story, because that ain't so. And then here on the dark table, where we all know, you know, we're, it's not news to us. It's kind of sad, but you know, people love their drama, don't they? They just love, 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 love. Anyway, and who understands politics in the first place? Yeah, I don't. I think it's just a uh, a consensus of morons dictating to other morons what other morons should do. Because for some fucking reason, whenever you have this voting bullshit going on, the people that want to do the voting don't want the shit that they're voting for to affect them. <laughs> they always want it to affect somebody else. <laughs> Make a law against pot. So... We can control people that smoke pot. What was the point of all that? Does I mean, I don't think here we are, twenty one thousand years into the future, and people are still in jail for smoking pot. Why? Could it be because your government is full of hypocritical lying sacks of shit that have zero conscience? When you think about what they're doing to me is the equivalent of putting somebody in prison because they took something, they ingested a substance that is designed to improve their life. And if they do take advantage of that opportunity, well, the government ain't going to like it. You know what they're going to do? They're going to decide how much time you should do in prison depending on how much of the shit you had in your possession. Now, wow. now, people like Mary. Mary, she's got kids and family and all that. She's normal and average, works her life. Da, 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 da. Even Mary doesn't think that you should be locked up for smoking weed. And Mary don't smoke weed. Of course, that's not, in my opinion, a bad thing. Because she doesn't bash the weed smoker. She just chooses to abstain. And I think, wait, hey, you got the right to do that. See, how you turn somebody down for a, a thing is very, it's very important, I think, to a lot of us. Some people don't like to be slapped in the face for their own fucking good. Some people are smart enough to understand it. If you're going to slap me in the freaking face, it ain't helping me. But the story is told. You know, We always get that story. Well, he was out of control and we had to get him. No, no he wasn't. You know, nobody's out of control. Even Chloe. Chloe should have, well, should have just thought more about how she treated people, but 
in my opinion, I I just didn't care for it. I didn't go all ape shit. Jump sides on it. But uh, I don't think she was surprised either. Because, good Lord. It takes a, crea- a creative mind and a lot of balls to tell people what you really fucking think. You, no matter how, especially if it's not polite. And I had that woman tell me to fuck off a time or two, and I went, eh, okay. But, you know, that's, uh, to me, again, it's, it's words on a screen, and they have your attention, because I know these people through the interwebs, they associate with friends, and wives, and whatnot, but it's electronic uh, interaction, so I, if I don't get it, you know, if I don't share that interaction with somebody, uh, I don't think I'd miss it. Like, well, I miss hands sometimes. Because I, I I like my daily reminder of what it means to support the state and, and where it takes people, you know. Supporting the state is a lot of work. I would not recommend that to a, a immature mind. Because <laughs> when you think about the uh, the things that you support, through your supportive state, based on, well, we need roads. There's your first lie. Some people understand that. Vinny knows this one inside out. That's why I really like to, (laughs) I really like to argue with Vinny because he's, (laughs) what he knows, he knows, and what he don't know, don't exist. So, for both of us to do that at the same time is epic. But, you know, this is my opinion. And anyway, it's this is not well, I think what radio is not is a negotiation. You know, when we do radio, each of us, uh, I'm going to take a moment to you know, put myself in a group because I see a common link, and that's that when we do radio, we're expressing our you know our personal way that we see whatever it is we're discussing, and I don't. I don't feel that uh, that part of it isn't open for negotiation at all. You're, you, know, you can judge it if you're a listener. You can try to control what, where it goes and how it's said, who says what, why they said it, all these details. But freedom of speech would be... I don't know if there's a freedom of listening. Maybe that part of it that we don't know because there's a nice way to talk to somebody and then there's a rude way to talk to people and we all know this and we all do it some some of us do it more extremely than others you know uh oh i got a they are insane too out of this moose about something but i'm just rambling on smoking my pipe to the solo dork table moose you know wondering uh i guess why it's so difficult for me to always stay in tune with it's whatever I see is my decision. You know, I can't seem to keep that one idea above and beyond every fucking thing else and, and stay in that frame of mind. Because when I when I look at everything else and I remember it's what I want to see, it's easier for me to accept whatever the fuck it is that I'm seeing. <laughs> I don't feel victimized by the concept. You know, I'm, I'm free. I'm engaging because I want to. And that, that might be freedom in my perspective. That might be how, you, how I would define a freedom is that I can look at the world and, and interpret it in any crazy fashion I want to and nobody has any right or uh, reason to dictate how I interpret the world around me. They can input, give me ideas to work with, but not control it. You know? And I think that uh, I, take, I take people's uh, input uh, about control very seriously. I, I'm not a big fan of control. I'm a big fan of freedom. I don't think freedom is the problem. I think confinement and uh, rules and regulations and you have to this and you have to that. Disguised as freedom has been the problem that we collectively have. Is They call it something it's truly not. They might as well just call this life prison. Paint your prison a color that you fucking like. 
because you're stuck in it. There is no opt out. You can't do anything but this. If you do, there's shepherds that will come out and find you and return you back to the fold for your own good. You know, because you got to have a license to do every fucking thing. You can't fish. You can't. Uh, what can you do without a license? I guess you can walk. So far, they haven't put a, a walking license on. <laughs> Maybe that I should shut up and give some politician an idea. <laughs> They'll be voting on the walking tax next month. But that's okay. Let's see what's going on in the chitter chatter. We still got we got Vinny and Moose Girl and Frumpy and Grimner and Salt Lake City Mike. Did we, and there's mental pancakes. Mental is posting Coonhound size restricted gifts. While I'm doing the door, I think I'm gonna open that mental and see what it is. Okay, I'll be here when you get back here. Cirque is taking Hannah for a little walk. She was getting a little barkity there for a minute. Out of control. <laughs> See nothing. Wow. You know, I was talking to a Dane about that tonight. And it's really sad to me that he, you know, it's World War II crap. You know, the Holocaust and all that horse shit. We were taught you know, the poor Jews and all Not that poor Jews weren't poor Jews, but that's not really the issue. What it was the wealthy used the Nazis to enforce the slave labor camps to produce sellable products to the free world. <laughs> and uh, they hid all that behind Hitler trying to get rid of the Jew banking out of, not, out of Germany. <laughs> they, they upgraded the, the, the names of these camps, these death camps, to take the attention off, they were slave labor camps. You know, think about the, the, how brilliant they were to disguise the railroad tracks coming in and out of the, these slave labor camps that was making products to sell. <laughs> of course, and also war products like, uh, I think Bush, hey Vinny, you're, you're really good on the, uh, checking shit out. Didn't Bush... Senior Prescott Bush, I think he had a ball bearing manufacturing outfit in one of the concentration camps that they called the concentration camps, slave labor camps during World War II. And all those railroad tracks that you see the pictures of today, that was all American money putting down those tracks. So there was no good guy and bad guy. It was a banker game. These people wanted war to make money off the people. What what do we need war for? What's the purpose of it? Oh, it'll control the politics. No, politics controls the war. <laughs> you need an enemy so that you can raise kids that are just dumb enough to go off and fight a war. <laughs> yeah, but I think we're... Are we beyond that yet? No, I guess not. We've got plenty of war to go around. Oh, what did you watch? Oh, Portrait of the Ozarks, Part 1. Shannon County Home. Never heard of it. Salt Lake City Max posting while I'm doing a dork table. Well, that's okay. I don't do it. See, I do the dork table much more. Uh, I'm much more comfortable. See, I'm all and I'm repetitive now. But with somebody else hanging around to talk back. I'd like to hear the other side. I just don't like to agree with it. <laughs> I have got my limits. <laughs> but, like I said last, you know, restrictions suck, but people are convinced they need them. How do you convince people that they're the ones that need to be restricted because they're too ignorant and can't judge life for their self. They have to trust this thing. And the thing that they trust brings some crap like CDC, FDA, FBI, CIA, IRS, all these institutions of torture and, and suffering. You know, things that punish and hurt. 
Now, if that's the product of your government, then, wow, I don't want it. But that's me. You know? People would think that, well, I live in Denmark with Cirque, but Cirque's the Dane, not me. I, I'm not bound to her Danish thing. She is. But I like being a guest in it. Never, I've never claimed this in a hundred years. But it's definitely worth seeing. I'll tell you this. If, you ever, if you're out there in Radio Land and, and you get the opportunity to go out and travel to place, someplace that you've never been before, I recommend that if it's interesting to you that you do it. You follow through with it. You never know what life is. Life is so big. I mean, wow, it's like Douglas Adams. I mean, it's really, really big. And it's long. It goes on and on and on. I mean, geez, 60 here. So if you're like 30 or 40 or even 50, you've got your past to compare that to. And it just, I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you get out of life when you've had enough life. There's a, that's a topic I'd be interested to do with Mary. I think Mary would have a lot to say. Maybe even Vinny. I've been harping on Vinny about his rulemaking lately, so he's mad at me. <laughs> but I, I don't follow rules. Rules are for people that, uh, I guess, to that need to feel safe and secure in their actions. Their, that their uh, behavior is conforming to, uh, you know, what's acceptable. And then there's some of us. And I'm working on it because it's really good to probably care about these things. But I don't. Superficial is just a waste of my time because as I've gotten older, things have changed. You know? Things have aged and decayed or broken or ran out or I used them all up or something. So what I'm looking at, that isn't as important to me as the way what I'm looking at makes me feel emotionally, I think, you know, and it, I guess you can compare it to a film. When you see a good film that was really good to see, you enjoyed watching it, it makes you feel good. You see a movie that was boring or dull, it makes you feel boring or dull. So in, that's how I do it. You know, I'm looking at it. I'm involved in the moment I'm in and I'm going through the thing I'm going through. And what I'm still to this minute, always have to try to remember to put that idea front is that is my choice my control but i think you know it's like rebelling against Vinny about the rules thing that constant outside force of others trying to control has pushed me mentally i think to the state of mind that i've i've accepted you know as real and when i go out in public the lack of communicating in the native tongue probably saves me a ton of shit. And I would say so. Because when uh, when I do go out, the only people that really want to talk to me, people don't want to speak English in the first place. They're, they're practicing or they like, they like it or they don't mind it. I mean, some people are like, it's like some kind of a punishment. <laughs> Just not very often, but they stand, you know, a negative will always stand out in a room full of positive people and you see one scowling prick in a corner somewhere, you know, being all grumbly. You notice them. You can't help not unless, I guess. No, I would notice. I would see. I'd feel it, that vibration would get my attention somehow. I don't know how to explain that, but other folk out there in the ER world, you know, electronic reality world, would probably know, I think, I think it would be kind of universal at some point where you walk into a room and depending on who's in it, you respond physically and mentally where your comfort levels actually go up or down depending on who's there. Lots of different kinds of rules. I like the ones that we don't give a flying fuck about because we don't break them. You know, Those things, they don't need to be... I think the law is the problem, Vinny, with all that. Is they've just broken it down and, and chiseled and shaped and, and formed and 
ruined everything. They've made it too much. It's it's impossible to not be a bad guy in a, an American justice system. So, uh, probably any justice system. I would even say the one I'm in now. So I just avoid contact you know, with the criminal element. You know, I don't do criminal activity. So there's I don't know that that vibration, whatever I give off to the police, whatever they're looking for, it ain't me. So that in itself, you know. But to live in a society where people have to be verbally instructed about details and how these details are going to be interpreted and what direction you're going to stand when you explain your side of the story to the guy in the black robe. Nah, I'll pass on all that shit. I know it's a reality and all that crap, but I don't, uh, fuck it. Sorry. It doesn't interest me. And, uh, I guess they take people by force at times if they have to, but eh. it's all a matter of interpretation too. Because you know, one man's meat is another man's non-meat, so they say. Oh, I I don't get involved in all that shit. Dude. And that's you. That's not my fight. I don't give a fuck. Animals do what animals do. And people react to the way they hear a story, the way they react. They got nothing to fucking do with me. Don't care either. You know, that's that's what I mean. It's so easy for me to just turn the fucker off, switch. It's over. doesn't matter. What matters is, to me, in life, all that really matters is what I physically can see. I'm just too simple of a, of a carbon-based life form to... Uh, to take on the entire existence of the world and let it control what's left of my life. Nah. And I don't find them trying to. It's more in just conversation, you know, verbal communication with other people than it is in any sense of reality. You know? Just um, live and let live. That mentality in life has always uh, carried me through. I've not seen a, a lifetime of struggling and not being able to accomplish this. No, oh, I'm short. I, my life was more like somebody else was short of something that I had an abundance of, but I didn't have what they had. And then life would bring us together. And there was some problem I could fix for that person. And because I do that, I've got a friend for the rest of my days. And, uh, it was a nice gift to be given. You know, sorry that people had to have the horrible shit that they did to each other happen. But, of course, if it hadn't been for those shitty people doing shitty things to nice people, then I would have never tripped along and found out and got involved. And things would have been different. But that <laughs> your history is easy. It's easier to see than... Uh, <laughs> Than it is to explain, I think, you know, because we all do it in our own. The results prove if something is right or if it's wrong, and it's a individual. And I, I've just got to learn. Not that Vinny's rules are right or wrong. It's just they're Vinny's rules. They're not my rules. I don't have to abide by his rules. See, rules need to be enforced by a third party. If you don't comply to the rule. If you want to be disagreeable to that rule, so what? Who's going to do what about it? And what rule are you breaking? See, it's, it's just like this mental game that we just constantly have to play with each other for some kind of a proof that we know something or something. Me, I just want to have a good time. You know? And get through the last of my days with as little physical problems as possible because what I learned in life is older you get, yeah, the more creaky and cratchy the shit inside you is. <laughs> and then I abuse the fuck out of myself with the smoking, drinking. But I think the balance of exercise and what would the other one be? Being open to ideas that are on the surface, insane, like being open to a 
baking soda. Because when, uh, when I hear about somebody who just recently died from cancer, I ponder what did they do, you know, what did they eat? And then I watch what other people have to say about it, you know. Buddy down at the bar knows that there's a connection between cancer and what we eat. And I think it's like, I remember seeing, uh, what was it, Batman, when they had the Joker, and he was some kind of a chemist, and he mixed a bunch of chemicals, and then when you interacted the lipstick with the hairspray, then you got this other reaction because those two chemicals were interacting. Separately, they're harmless. Together, right? And that's a big part of how we live. We're inundated in these freaking chemicals, and there's it's such minute amounts that it takes years for the shit to accumulate in the individual. But it gets us all ill along the road. We're all going to be ill from something. Time seems to do that. You know, as you age, some illness or disease or part wears out. And, you know, the end. But the middle part, you know, we're not the middle part, but the living part where you're breathing, walking around and doing shit. I think I'm in a lot more control of that than other people think I am. Other people think that it's uh, life is dictated by the state and you know the, the police and the this and the those and the and it is in a way and sometimes um, I think that if it matters how much attention you pay to that world for it to be present in your own you know it's like I was harping about earlier each individual reality, although we share a collective reality, individual one is way different. Yours is so different than mine. Mine is way different than Moose. Moose is way different than Grim, and on and on and on. But yet we share this collective thing where we engage each other. Sometimes we get along, sometimes we don't. That is that. Maybe that's not really what's important. Is uh, the details. Maybe it's the long game, not the short game that matters. You know? what, what tools am I picking up along the road to help me uh, access the goals that I've got for myself in life? And they're all mental. You know? It's not physical shit. It's all ideas that you start with, and then you take a step physically later. But everything, my, my personal thing, it's always been, I'm going to try that. Or I'm going to look into this. It's very seldom is it ever a physical action. Boom, right away. But when you talk about things, and then depending on how much time passes, some people think that three months is quick. And some people think three months is an eternity. So, it you know, again, individual perspective. And the right to be fucking wrong. I, I like to reserve that right, to be wrong. Because if I am, the only person I'm wrong to in the long run is me. It doesn't, my opinion about something doesn't physically affect anyone else. They can either agree with it, disagree with it, not like it, love it, whatever they want to. But your input into that idea doesn't change my idea or vice versa. Um, so I try to look out for, I think, the more important things. When I'm not fucking around with Hansel a little bit, I mean, the more important things in life, like, uh, well, let's use Grimm's affinity for the Nordic tribes, you know, Scandinavia. And, you know, that that life's interest him. Well, and I've got the luxury. I was talking to Kim. I've got a friend in America, and he likes the Scandinavians. And here I am in Scandinavia, living among the Scandinavians. And I understand from by doing this, what other people would imagine. It's, to this day, it's still, there's a, there's a feel to the, to the, the uh, Danish people that's kind of unique to other people. I'm starting to get more familiar with them. And th we have a bartender that is from the uh, Faroe Islands where they do the whaling. And she's not Danish. Oh, no, no, no. She speaks Danish, but she's from the Faroe Islands. And she has this different kind of look about her in her eyes. 
I guess it's kind of hard to explain, but you know, something different about her than uh, the normal Danish people that I've encountered. But yet, she fits in amongst them as you know way better than I ever would. She speaks their language really well. But there's still something. It's hard to uh, define, and, and when you visually look at something, and it, something clicks in your mind that there's something unique about. It. This person seems out of place where they're at, yet they fit in at the same time. And being aware, that aware of other people's presence, it's a lot of work. You know? Because uh, there's so many of you out there for me to pay attention to. But I've got this thing about the, the smart and the striking of What's available around me is usually uh, who I end up speaking with. And phew, very lucky in the uh, participating with other folks' department, you know. But, well, I've always understood water seeks its own level. So if I wanted to be argumentative and rude and, and uh, criticize and be mean and all that, I would attract the exact opposite of what I'm receiving right now because what you put out, in my opinion, see, what I put out is what I receive. And that doesn't mean you can't encounter somebody that ha you're not even there. That person is going to behave that way with or without you in the building. It doesn't even involve you. So when you watch something, it's like that physics book tries to explain. When you physically see something, then it becomes real. But until you make that physical eye contact with it, whatever that's defined as, <laughs> I don't know how to explain that to you, but the minute blank that, then it's real. But when you close your eyes again, it's gone. <laughs> then you open your eyes and it's back. And the, write, the writings tell me that all these things happen quickly, beyond the, what we can even measure in our words we don't do words like that because it's so quick but i wasn't taught these things growing up so i think that my nature is to cast a shadow of doubt on that's a little extreme you know so that i can doubt it and be pushed away from in you know investigating that and then being led to the frequencies the vibrations the fear and the love wavelength well, I remember when I first wrote about that. And the word love has just been tossed around over the years so much that, uh, depending on the listener, I think the word has a different meaning. I, I don't think it, it's a, uh, I don't think it's an understood one size fits all kind of word. I, I believe that we, have uh, we've been given this illusion of freedom so we also we believe that we believe things that we believe <laughs> when we only believe them because if we don't believe them other people will ridicule us like uh, when I doubt the flat uh, the round earth thing and I go ah maybe it's flat oh here we go and I'm a lunatic because I'm allowing the, the possibility of what I've been told might not be true. So it makes me crazy. And I think, well, okay. You know, if that's the way you take that. But why would it matter to uh, an, another person? How would it, my interpretation of the life I'm living, how can that possibly interfere with theirs in any way you have to engage it you have to allow these things to take place or they don't uh, out of sight out of mind there's a lot of ways to prove it but i don't know i think the fighting is more it's more entertainment than we want to admit i enjoy you know, i enjoy fight. Pack a bowl of chili, says Grim. I'm not packing a bowl of chili. I'm packing a bowl. <laughs> I don't. I don't burn chili. <laughs> hey, that would be good. 
I'm going to burn me some chili right now, people. It's 420 somewhere. 22. But it's very difficult to keep a lot of these ideas, these new ideas that I got. Keep them in mind about the reality is my, it's my dictation, not yours. But yet, we all want to tell the other guy, it probably sounds to the other guy that what I'm saying is the same thing as him telling me. And uh, I don't know. Is it? I guess I'll try to figure this crazy idea out on the replay. But, uh, you know, uh, I think we live in a rule, in a, a invisible rules. The world, just the live and let live, don't do any harm to anybody else's life. And the people that, that really hold that value show their self in my life. Where uh, we can openly talk about living, let live, and be understood. So, hmm, I, there it goes. I think that if, if your life sucks or people don't please you or this, that, or the other, and uh, it's because, <laughs> well, one is water seeks its own level, and sometimes you're going to run into abrasive, you know. Embrace of people that don't that don't please you, I suppose. But that doesn't to me that doesn't mean society's fucked up. Society isn't so much the people in it; it's the shit behind people in it. Because <laughs> oh, like you know that imaginary line in the road when you're coming into oncoming traffic, and there's no divider; it's just a painted line down the center of the road. What makes you stay on the side that you're on? You know, it's it's uh, that trust that we have that the game that we play won't defeat us. And every once in a while, they call them traffic accidents. You know, somebody might be texting or arguing with a partner or just have bad luck or be a shitty driver. <laughs> and the next thing you know, you wreck the car. But these are the, you know, the results of life. But then I look at that driving down because I blindly walk down the road. I'm not mentally concerned with is a car behind me going to run off the road and run me over. I'm not constantly concerned with all that safety shit. I'm just try to stay on the sidewalk and hope for the best. <laughs> wow. Uh. Vinny and Grim are added over cookies. Must be that computer talk, because the computer's always asking me if I want to let it accept cookies. And I went, chocolate chip cookies or peanut butter cookies? And the computer didn't answer me, so I don't know what to do. Been meaning to ask you about that, Grim. <laughs> peanut butter or chocolate chip? Yep. Hey, were you baking cookies, Mr. I was... Uh, obviously vacant the other day. Gone. We were all wondering what happened to Grim. Because you were usually, it's usually at a time you're on. But we figured, you, I think Vinny thought of it. You were making some chocolate chip cookies. Uh, then I see this talk, chocolate chip cookie talk. Well, not even chocolate chip, just cookie talk. On the real living media dot com feed. I think they're talking some kind of code. But I'm not sure. Could be. Anyway, what do we got here? We got uh, about uh, 30 minutes to go to make a complete dork table. I haven't done a solo dork table in a while. So it's probably good for me to get on here and you know, air out the brain cells and rant about a personal belief system. And I don't, I don't think anybody in the... Everybody's got one. I don't think we all use it. I think... How do I explain that I think a lot of us do in ways that we're not aware of, but the society is so con it's so controlling. It is hard to uh, write a sentence without involving this entity thing. You know, we've either got its pr approval or we've got its protection or some horseshit like that. It's a bunch of crap, <laughs> but. Might as well be talking about Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, you know. 
religious stuff. <laughs> now, I, I would be one of those people that would separate religion from some life spirit thing. Spiritual. I, I don't even know about that. that I, so it's lumping people into groups is the problem. You know, so, if you're coming like being a Jew, oh, hey, hey, there's no way out of the Jew thing. Some people don't know, but the ones that know, are they know so much, they're, they're, uh, they're intrusive with it. You know, the behavior of the, the Arab that's had bad problems with the Jew won't like you. But the Arab that doesn't give a fuck and knows the Jews are just money grubbers, got nothing to do with me, they're different. And I think to experience, worldly experience that, where you've gone to other people's places, like uh, David, da his name is David. I call him David. He lets me get away with it. And he's from Iran. And I, he's the same as me, except, you know, uh, the hair. But the mentality, the way he does business, he's very nice to everybody. He, you know, he's cordial. He keeps the place nice and clean. It's so for us to be, you know, blood enemies because of religious crap. It's <clears throat> well, in both our, I think both of our opinions, it's ridiculous. It's our governments, not us, we got nothing to do with that crap. But we're both sharing the Danish life, and uh, wow. So I, maybe, maybe if you've not seen it. If you have been to a, another country where you, you know you don't speak the language, it's really wild. It's a wild way to live. I can see why the Mexicans are, are moving into California now. <laughs> no se habla español, se. <laughs> yeah, you got to be able to speak Spanish. And when I left California in 2002, I had to speak Spanish to get a state job working for the government. And I thought, wow, can you imagine? In your you know, your own backyard where you think, nah, never in a million years. And this went <laughs> when it goes back a long way. And I, I'm gonna go out of the uh, world thinking that communication is what fucks us all up. It doesn't join us together. We don't seem to make groups and change anything for the better. We just bitch about shit that's going on. Blame Trump. <laughs> Trump. Donald Trump's in the White House fucking it up. <laughs> no, he ain't. That's Goldman Sachs. But you can call it Trump. It doesn't really matter what you call it. I think recognizing the government's got some problems, no, that's a nice beginning. Then what? What do you do after that? Then you go, well... Well, what do we replace it with? Nothing. That's the whole problem. Is <laughs> this is not how people are designed to work? And if you look into the sources of food and water, <laughs> electricity and medical, all these huge things that we've been convinced we have to have. If we don't, we're going to die. Well, they manipulate all of them so we get really, really bad service. Whatever we're getting, it's not right for us. And the proof is in the reality. I mean, violence, chaos, overcrowding, shortages, all these made-up crappy fucking stories that were sold. Hmm. But I guess the truth about life, if we were just left alone with what worked best for all of us, why that would bring a divide is kind of beyond me. Instead of, you know, this uh, Republican, let's use that one, a Republican Democrat thing. We're like, there's a difference, right? No, they still want government. Okay. So, the people that are involved in that don't have the same look about it than the people that are looking onto it. So, divide and conquer. You know? Instead of, a clear objective look at what's good for human life. And let's go with that. We get these fraudsters that come up with climate change, regulation, and, you know, the 50 and the 60 cycle generator instead of what was 
what was har- harmonious, I think that's the right word then, you know, the right harmony, the right frequency. All these things are knowledge. I don't hold this as knowledge, but I know how to find it. Uh, <laughs> Grimnir says, Flash, the government doesn't have problems. The government is a problem. And that, too, I agree with that, Grim, but it's not the popular vote. The popular vote is that we're a bunch of savages and that left to our own devices without the, this imaginary authority to threaten you into behaving correctly, that we would just rape and kill each other at will all constantly. That would be life. Like it is now, only different. So... I think it would be a matter of your environment, wherever you're at. If you're in a high crime area, why would you want to live in it? I, I don't understand that. But I, I've never, I've never lived where I didn't want to stay. If I didn't want to stay, I got up and left. Doesn't a bit of dirt's a bit of dirt. Yeah, it's, it's all a matter of how you, uh, how you perceive your. Your surroundings, I suppose. Taking this government stuff, I guess I must have when I was younger, because I went through that driver's license thing. And I'm telling you, up till I was almost 28, I was still uh, concerned about <clears throat> having the you know the documents and moving up in the world and getting a better job than the one I had. And then something happened in that year, and I just stopped and went. Fuck, I don't really think I care about any of this anymore. <laughs> and uh, I was right. For me, other people. Woo. Because I, I think uh, people look at life experience and judge them as good or bad mistakes. Or, oh, that made me so happy. Or this made me so unhappy. Instead of just existing, we, we exist with a scale of good and bad to distract you. From the moment that you're in, you're always being drug out of the moment you're in to go to another moment in the future or maybe the past. And it's not impossible. We do it all the time. We're very capable. We're human. We're amazing machines. We can do things that animals will never evolve into. And here we are. And we argue about who owns the color blue or what rule is better for you or the other guy or rules in general or laws control issues what do i need to do or say to make you do what i want you to do instead of just being asked to do or instead of being taught this is what is the best for all of us proven by honest people that took a scientific serious look at it and figured out yep hemp seeds they're a good source of nutrition we should all eat them no, instead, what do we get? Politicians and religious zealot nut jobs that wanted to make it illegal so they could sell us all this second grade crap that put us where we are. And we've got a whole bunch of people talk about, oh, taking their, you know, taking life back. We never had life. Governments own me ever since the day I was born. I can go back in hindsight and see that. But during times, it, it, I had the, the the appearance of being free, I guess. I even, at times, thought I was free. But when you, when you think about it, I've always been dependent on other people to do things like bring electricity and water and or plumbing, shit like that. You know, the, 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 my normal daily things uh, took a lot of work to get us to where we are physically. The sad thing I found out is that the systems that they use create waste to create profit, to create more customers, to create waste, to create more profit. And eventually it collapses into itself out of decay because these things, they're not maintained, they're, they're recycled in. You you know you use it till it breaks and you get another one. And wow, where how did we get conned into that? Because when I was a kid, growing up in America, things were made in America, baby. And I'm telling you, those toys were 
fucking fast. You could beat on them, stomp on them, throw them, kick them, and they'd still be what you had. Ten years went by and everything was being made out of plastics and breakable shit and garbage. Of course, it was cheaper, so prices were down so they could sell more, so they could make more profits. Instead of selling one good thing that lasts you 30 years, they'd rather sell you 15 shitty things. And as a collective society, this is what we've ended up with, all of us. Me too. I'm not, I'm not immune to the reality in any way. I just know that I can choose to engage what I please to at any level that I please to. It's not I'm not being forced to do anything by anybody. I don't feel that. And where other people seem to. I don't think Cirque feels she's she likes being whatever the fuck this country stuff is to her. I think she enjoys it. Uh, it's not it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a thing. And it's something for us to chatter about it on the internet. You know, different cultures have different laws or different ways of doing things or different ways of getting from one point to the other. You know, like the English drive their cars are drive steering wheels on the right than in Australia. But most of the rest of the world, it's on the left. I think it was Vinny that told me the reason they did that is because you're on, you're unarmed if you drive on the left. Or wait, you're, unar you're unarmed if you drive on the uh, left side of the car, left side or the right side. I, I got him confused, but he was he equated it to being armed while you're driving, and I don't know. I know this, driving on the wrong side of the road in, in England, when you're not familiar with it, is freaking weird. <laughs> I never did adapt to it. I was in Scotland for a pretty solid bit of time, and I never did adjust to the left side of the road. I'm now in Denmark, where it's the, the normal on the side I'm used to. I'm, I'm just, this is what I'm familiar with. But, I guess when you're in it, you adapt. Human beings are incredible. Man. We adapt to whatever is around us. And sometimes it's not a pleasant adapt. It's, it's a, like it causes a friction where you're not comfortable, but you'll still do certain things because they need like a... I enjoy my, my responsibilities that I've volunteered to do. I, I enjoy doing them. And I can always mix and match crap. I can do five things or I can just go out and do one thing. And maybe that's freedom, is uh, the lack of a, of a daily routine schedule. And now Cirque's not going into the office as much no more. Ha, ha, ha. That's working out good. But she'll go in about three days in a week. And still, that gives her some time to get into the city and visit and and then come home. And uh, she likes both. So she found a way to balance. And I think that when you're comfortable in where you live and how you live, that it just makes you more, uh, what would the right way to put that? I don't think she's more agreeable, but she's openly a happier person than somebody that's not, not content. You know, and happiness is relative anyway. But I think, again, it's something that uh, I can choose. I can decide. I just can't remember that all the time. But when I do remember, you know, oh, I'm in, I'm in the driving seat here. I'm looking out at the world. I must be in control of something. Even if it's an illusion, at least I can, I can make the decisions about this. So I do. And other people don't necessarily need to believe or agree or understand. I, I think that's how we all do it personally. It's just the way we express it. That it's all a matter back to interpretation, you know, because there's an ass for every saddle. And, <laughs> and if there ain't the saddle will, you know, wear the ass in or the ass will wear the saddle in one or the other. And that, 
I don't think even Vinny could argue with that. <laughs> Maybe we can ban or prohibit some new stuff. Maybe that's what the America needs. We need to ban something. What what needs to be banned? Any ideas? <laughs> Look at how well the alcohol and drug ban prohibition bans thing went. <laughs> Gambling. <laughs> Gambling. <laughs> There's laws. I, laws. What the fuck? Why, did, why have we been conditioned to believe that entity government has the right to control us to the level that it, it truly controls us. And most people do it without... I did it. When I did it, I didn't consider it. It was never uh, it was never on my mind. Other people brought it to me as an idea, and I went, oh, you're out of your fucking mind. And I lived a little bit more, and then I listened a little bit more, and I thought about it. I started to see what they were talking about, with my own eyes. And there you go. That's the difference between uh, fact and fiction, I suppose, would be what, what you have seen with your own eyes compared to what somebody else is telling you they saw. There's fiction. But your own, ah, that that's real. You know? I can't judge your reality, but I sure do get a giggle out of trying to. <laughs> Because we type horrible, mean shit to each other on the reallibertymedia.com chat. Sometimes it's just ideas that just don't translate very well. People take things, they take them personal. I do, I think. Try not to. That's why I want to stay on top of this. I'm in, I'm the one looking, so I should be judging. I should be the one in control, interpreting, not being told how to interpret what I'm looking at. That. That doesn't strike me very well. I don't know why I go against it so harshly. Considering my stand on all this is there is a definite something that benefits all and a something that benefits only a few and we as collective choose the latter. Instead of what's good for everybody, we have this world where some people, because of their blood relations, are more uh, financially successful than other people. Hmm. And that's an interesting thing, because why? Why in the world would so few people need to hoard up all the funds and finance and resources amongst themselves from all the rest of us? And then all the rest of us are so gullible and lame and easily led all you got to do is tell us stories about shit. There you go. You're a victim. You, you've been screwed over by the man, baby. You know, the Holocaust is a great example of truth taken out of context, retitled, stuffed down your throat with uh, a twist. There's a lot of truth in it, but not exactly the way you're being told the story. The story is similar to what happened, but... Not completely, you know. And, oh man, try to say something positive about Adolf Hitler in in the internet world, and you're immediately uh, you're either for or against Hitler. Well, it's, there's no neutral. That's one of the few ideas that we've all been beaten to death with. That uh, you can't be neutral on Hitler, and I try to be, and I think. Hitler, in his own way, whatever he was trying to accomplish, the man was still a shill for bankers. That's what big government is. So, you know, big business makes government seem like a necessity to the people because you can't trust big business. They'll fuck you over. You need government oversight to manage the businesses that are presently fucking you over. <clears throat> but you got government to tell you how these things aren't happening when they truly are. Oh, uh, 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 I was reading the chat and I saw Anti being a funny character. No, Anti, you're not. You, you see things the way you see things. And that's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. 
I just think that uh, we all see them a little differently. Now, when we type about it, we find ways to disagree. And the truth of it is, it's all the same bullshit anyway. It doesn't matter. We're, uh, we're just experiencing life. Yeah. Typing on a computer screen, it shouldn't be a critical issue kind of thing. It should be entertainment. And if it gets beyond entertainment, why? What could possibly have your attention so much that you find flying? Because <laughs> I'm a flaw finder. Oh, my goodness. Like I said, this is not a negotiation. I'm not here to bargain with anyone. I was just doing radio to voice an opinion. And I think every concept idea is an opinion. I don't find there's too much that I can put my my hands on and prove as fact to other people. So, hmm. I figure if that's the way I, I see it, but that's not the way other people. Other people are satisfied with the stories they're told without any physical proof. And that's how we ended up with the birth certificate, the IRS, Federal Reserve Bank, fractional reserve banking practices, <laughs> all these things, IRS, IMF, they're entities that are made real by people and then enforced at the end of, of a gun barrel and, and prison time if you don't engage the way you're told, the way that they're telling you. And they call it freedom. And it's complete and total fucking stupidity to call that freedom. It's slavery. So I've come to these ideas where I just look at a, one country ties you up with barbed wire and another country ties you up with loose rope. You're still tied. You know? But we're human, man, and we'll adapt. to uh, People will get used to anything just to survive. We have that thing about us, but it's not its not a matter of a uh, big topic. It's not a big thing about how tough we are and what we can do, what we can accomplish. And it's always been shit like, I think me and Vinny or Mary was talking about, oh, in the day, they had it so tough, and oh, look at these big old monuments they built. How in the hell could they have done that? They were so primitive. And I took her to the lead scale, and of course... Other people took me to him, but he's been around for a long time. And he did a lot of this stuff. And he did it in the 1900s. But he used the technology of the old days from the pyramids, the way they built the pyramids. So it's all relative. If you want to move the bigger piece of block, you want to move the bigger tools, you need to move it. It's not. There's nothing impossible. It had to happen. Because we see the finished results. But what happens is somebody will pervert the story of how it happened. So we're always, you know, at odds arguing with each other about this happened and that happened and that's the way it happened. And I know it this way. And you're wrong. And on and on. And we argue and banter. And we go back and forth about stuff, right? And I wonder what all that's about. I have my deep thoughts where I think it's to keep us off balance so that we're not looking to be balanced. I think balance is something you have to be aware of. And you got to look for it. It ain't just going to find you. That would be chaos. Chaos finds you. Balance, mm, that's a whole other story. That takes a lot, in my opinion, it takes a lot of discipline. you got to think about stuff. It takes, you know, concentration and attention. You can't just have perfect fall into your lap. And if you do, good luck. But I think balance where it's it's perfect and it feels whatever it is I'm looking for it to feel. That takes me a, a little extreme. It's not like I can just wake up. And I'm, no, I have to balance, and get things right, have the right amount of coffee, right amount of pipe hits. And then I get myself into that mental state where I'm whatever the fuck I'm looking to be. And on any given day, it can fluctuate. I can I can enjoy just about any mood I get. Um, but now that I know 
that I'm more in control. Uh, <laughs> I don't argue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Vinny's being funny on here. I, 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 I don't know, Vinny. I, reading stuff is way different than hearing them. I, I know that. But we'll come up with a new password. And crack the code. Anyway, I've been Dork Table in here. That's enough Dork Table for me for a solo. And thanks a lot for hanging out with me today on the Saturday, the 23rd of November, 2019, at the Dork Table on reallibertymedia.com. With uh, your main guy back there is Grimnir. And uh, Moose Girl is usually his partner when they do radio. But Grimnir is the, basically the techie guy behind all this stuff. So if you want to do a show, I'll tell you what. We're always open for other people. There's a few new shows on the radio right now. we got a schedule. And all you got to do is go to reallibertymedia.com and open up the schedule, the radio schedule, and you can see who's available. We've got Chuck Ocelli in the States, and we've got Vinny in Arkansas, and we got Grimner in New Mexico. We got Moose Girl in Grimner, and she's in Wisconsin. So there's a variety, and sometimes I, I get Mary to come on and help me out with a dork table or a in a perfect world. This week I had to go solo. All my co-hostages went, "Ah, do it yourself, Baldy. Fuck up," you know. <laughs> so I did. Anyway, that should about do it. For me, uh oh, oh, I see. I got a whole problem here. Let me try to figure out how to close. There we go. Over and.